Good afternoon and welcome to this second Visit Scotland webinar looking at what we do through this COVID-19 crisis. I'm Bill McFarlane, my company Pink Elephant Communications has worked with Visit Scotland for well almost 30 years now helping on communication issues and it's my pleasure this afternoon to have as our guest Vicky Miller who's Director of Marketing for Visit Scotland. So there's a lot to get through, Vicky. Um, these are very strange times. Just explain, first of all, what is your role for those that you've yet to meet in person? Give us an idea of your responsibilities. Okay, so I am Director of Marketing and Digital for Visit Scotland. Um, so my role really is to put in place the plans and the capability that allows us to, or that helps us to grow Scotland's share of the global visitor market. So it's, it's about raising awareness of Scotland in our key priority markets. Um, it's about building that intent and propensity to um, visit Scotland. And of course, it's about connecting visitors with the businesses right across Scotland. And that's a really important part of what we do. It's that geographic spread of visitors. So promoting with our local partners and local stakeholders and the industry in Scotland, all that Scotland has got to offer across all of our key markets. And it was all going very well until earlier this year. Gosh, we're complaining, Vicky, about over tourism, weren't we? And having to manage that. But just tell me, uh, you had a marketing plan for 2020. What did you do? Rip it up? Start again? What did your team have to do? Effectively that, although um, what I would say is that, you know, key to all of this is that we've got a really good um, social media following, we've got a very engaged audience, we've got a large email database um, and we've got lots of contacts in all of our key markets, particularly with the tour operators and the travel agents. So continued, we have really continued to build those relationships and nurture those channels so that they will stand, the, the, you know, that will see us through this difficult period. So it's been really about keeping in touch with all of those those audiences and key stakeholders in our markets. Um, so that's been a really important part. But yes, in terms of our proactive activity, we really had to pause everything that we were doing and turn our kind of focus and attention to the stay home, stay safe messaging. Um, and then really restart what we were doing with promoting armchair travel. So dreaming about Scotland now, but very much traveling later when the time is right and when it's safe to do so. Um, so that's really where our, our kind of immediate focus um, turned to after um, lockdown. And how has all of that gone? What I see through our social channels is a very, very engaged audience. And in fact, when we relaunched um, our social channels with some more proactive activity, so really sort of starting to entertain, because that was what our audiences were telling us, you know, we, we, we still want, we want some nice content in our, um, in our social media feeds. Um, so that kind of armchair travel. Um, and we launched with the Absence Makes the Heart Grow Fonder um, video. Um, and it really was about saying, look, Scotland will still be here. We will be waiting with a warm welcome when the time is right. But for now, stay home, stay safe and share your memories. And actually, we got an overwhelming response to that um, with visitors from around the world telling us that, you know, they were gutted. They had to cancel their plans, but that they would be back sharing their holiday memories and, and even from people who hadn't yet been but had Scotland on their list saying we will come when the time is right. So I think that for me gave hope you know that when it will be a, a phased process out of this pandemic and to see the recovery and of the tourism economy um, but we, we have got a real, um, I guess, loyal um, fan base out there. And there is an intent um, to travel to Scotland. And we're even seeing that through some of the surveys that we're starting to get some real data now from consumers. Um, we're, we're involved with Visit Britain in a, a tracker and we've had the first wave of um, insight from that tracker, which has actually highlighted that Scotland within that UK market context um, is right up there as one of the regions that consumers want to travel to when the time is right and it's safe to do so. So that's been really um, encouraging. 
there's an opportunity, I suppose, Vicky, for everyone to reset their life, to reset their business just now. I'm just going to ask a question that, that has come in early here, uh, and that's from Joe Goldblatt, who's saying, how's Visit Scotland repositioning its marketing messages to promote local tourism development and avoid over-tourism? I mean, you can reset, I suppose, because of this, uh, this enforced pause. Yeah, we are looking, we're working to a phased plan here, which is very much in line with what Riddle would have talked about if anybody was on the call last week where Riddle talked about the, the kind of respond, reset, restart, recover, um, STERG plan that we're all working to. And these are phases actually that the Scottish Government are working to in their kind of recovery plans across all sectors. Um, and I think we do have an opportunity, you know, we were in a situation where we had, um, you know, hotspots around the country that where we were talking about over tourism. So we have got an opportunity to talk about and signpost to the, the, the kind of hidden gems and the different parts of Scotland. Working through that reef, that, that phased plan, what we're anticipating is that when the countryside opens, which we are expecting to hear a wee bit more from Nicola Sturgeon tomorrow, from First Minister tomorrow, likely to be at the end of the month, that actually we will still be very much reinforcing that stay local message because um, we know that there will be communities in Scotland that particularly are maybe still shielding. We know that there's going to be um, capacity issues, particularly within public transport. So it will be allowing people to be signposting to people what they can do still that is closer to home. And it's going to be very important that during this next period, we balance our messaging around the supply and the demand, making sure that we can signpost to visitors what's, what's safe and what's open um, and the things that they can do. Anticipating then that as things improve um, and that we get to the end of the summer, um, where there is maybe a wee bit more travel um, permitted across certainly the UK, which is where we are seeing that kind of green shoots of recovery will come from um, in terms of, of visitors. We will have a phase where it will be about Scotland only, and it will be about reconnecting Scotland, eh, Scots with Scotland, and really building that national pride. And I guess encouraging Scots to re-explore um, their own country. Moving into a phase where it will then be um, across the UK. Now we will only do that when we know that the industry is ready, um, that, that we've got the capacity, that it's safe, but anticipating that that will be the autumn, um, we will look at a bigger push across the UK and then on into sort of short haul and long haul. And within each phase, I think what is really important is we get that messaging and tone. And as you say, that sentiment, right, that this is an opportunity to restart with that responsible travel messaging at the heart, promoting the things that are off the beaten track, the great outdoors, um, the coast and countryside that maybe is less explored, but we, we can't also forget about the important, the green spaces that we have in our cities um, and the proximity that the cities have to coast and countryside. So the cities also have a great offering and, um, um, and will be an important part of that messaging. But, you know, I think you're right. Responsible travel, safety, as well as that inspiration is going to be really important. Um, as, as part of that messaging as we move through each phase. And I think what will also be really important is that we work with the communities and the industry around the country to make sure that we you visit Scotland through our activity and through our channels, that we are, are promoting the key things that consumers, visitors can, can do in each local area and get the, the messaging right for every part of the country. So it will be about balancing that, that supply and demand, um, I think, for the next wee while. I see some of the questions coming in thick and fast. Uh, so let's just get a couple of them there. Uh, one of them is about that balance. And, and the question asks, how do you allay the fears of people in rural communities where incidence of COVID-19 has been very low? So that, for me, is about making sure that we include those communities in our activity when the time is right. So it, it goes back to that, that message about we need to be responsible, we need to understand that it's not a one-size-fits-all picture around the country. You know, I'm, I'm very aware that there are, you know, places in our countryside, you think of thinking of the home in the Trossachs National Park as an example, you've got community, small communities like Luss, 
we've got to make sure that LUS is ready and, and ready for visitors before we would start doing anything to promote that particular community. So I think everybody has, I would like to reassure everybody that this is going to be something where we work ever more has been the time when we need to work together to make sure that we get this right and we get the, the, the right product messages, experiences in front of visitors based on what's safe to do so and based on what the capacity is and as you see some of those communities where there is still that fear factor. Uh, David at the Scottish Maritime Museum wants to know how do you actively go about promoting with campaigns without a time scale and that's the difficulty here Vicky isn't it because it we just don't know when. No, which is why we're really working to a phased plan. And what we've done at the moment is that the outline of that plan is on um, visitscotland.org. So uh, we are, we, our intention is to be open, transparent, to keep that communication flow going with industry sector groups and using visitscotland.org as a place to kind of share our plans and our thinking. It is very much on the basis of phases at the moment and, and kind of around those timescales that I mentioned, which is we will start very slowly and gradually. It's going to be about staying local and then might be something a little bit more about encouraging that, that, that Scottish um, Scots to explore Scotland, whether that's day trips and, and short overnight stays, because I know that there are self caterers um, across Scotland who will welcome um, that opportunity to, to get those um, so those visitors that do want to travel and stay over, even from within Scotland. And then, as I say, moving, um, moving at a pace that the industry is, is ready. So this is going to be about a two-way dialogue and it's going to be about finessing the timing based on that, that supply side information and the health information that we get from government. Uh, well, someone at Glen Shee is asking, will you then be focusing on autumn and winter as big campaigns? Yes, that, that's certainly our thinking, is that that will be definitely the time to look at a bigger um, push. So I think through every phase, what has been really important is that we keep Scotland top of mind in all of our key markets, that we continue to build that brand loyalty, that trust, that advocacy for Scotland. That's really, really important. But the autumn gives us that real um, window, which means that we probably would need to be out there with a campaign in about the August time to get that, um, that autumn boost. Because clearly we are going to, I think, unfortunately, given the circumstances, we're going to miss the main season. So this will be about trying to get as much recovery for the industry over that, um, the last quarter of this year and the first quarter of um, next year. Um, so that is when we see that kind of bigger proactive uh, push of activity. Um, there's a, there's a question, Vicky, about uh, a kite mark. Now, I know there's been some organisation has produced a kite mark, but will there be, a, if you like, a stamp of approval that you can help to organise to say this place is hygienically authorised to trade? So yes, there is work and actually it's UK Hospitality have done a, a huge piece of work to look at um, the guidance for businesses around the whole social distancing, health and hygiene piece. Now, my understanding is that that white paper that they've pulled together, which is very detailed and as I think they have run past the World Health Organization and all the kind of key people that need to, from a health perspective, review that, it has been put in front of the Scottish Government, it's been put in front of Westminster as well. And my understanding is, and it's actually Riddle that's leading on this piece, um, is that the plan is to have a UK approach to this. So to have some UK guidance for the industry. Um, and whether it's a kite mark, I think is, is still to be decided. What we do know is that the guidance is there. They're now turning their attention to how do they almost operationalize it? How do they provide that information to you through whether it's a kind of an online tool that will allow you to go through and read that information to sign up and agree that that's what you are going to put in place and then I'll give you something that will allow you through your consumer channels to basically say that you're complying with with the, the guidance that's been given. So that is the intention that it has a, that there's a UK scheme um, and 
that it's something that will allow you, there will be some kind of mark, whether it's a kite mark, that will allow you to use that as part of your marketing. And clearly will allow me through, and all of us through our, our communications to visitors to reassure. And I think that's really important because we know from the research that we're seeing is that that is top of mind right now for visitors. And people will travel if they know that you know, we are putting their health and safety front, front and, and it's paramount that we are taking that seriously um, and so that's something that I'm really keen within our messaging and within our creative that we will reinforce because it's building that trust for Scotland as a destination. Okay um, social distancing um, somebody from SRPS uh, Railways Neil McDonald actually is saying uh, okay so he runs this but it's really impossible to run what he does with proper social distancing and it looks as if it's going to have to be beyond that point he can reopen. Any message on that for people who have to wait longer? So we know that, yeah, I mean, public transport and, you know, we've got some great rail journey experiences, you know, across Scotland and these actually are things that are very popular. But we know the capacity issues initially that, you know, there are going to be capacity issues with public transport. So we need to wait and see what the guidance is and what that's going to mean for the transport operators. But we know it's not going to mean that they're going to be able to operate the, 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 the capacity that, that, that they did initially. But what we also know is that actually the, the interest we're seeing, and again, what's coming out of the, the research is that car has always been the number one car. Um, and we're certainly, camper van is the other you know, popular. We're seeing that in the research is that people will, will travel by car because again, they want to kind of um, protect their loved ones. Scotland obviously can be um, enjoyed and explored by car. Um, it's a difficult one because obviously from a, an environmental perspective, we were trying to encourage more public transport. So I think we've got to balance that as well with getting to Scotland by car, but then enjoying Scotland by bike and by and walking and, and you know through the great outdoors when you are here and that you can do that within the cities, the countryside and the coast. So I think this is also an opportunity, recognising that people are going to use their own vehicles initially um, with the limitations that potentially we will have um, on public transport for the immediate, that we also use this opportunity to promote what you can do through um, kind of more adventure, whether that's soft or, or you know, more adrenaline fueled um, cycling. But you know, I think that's going to be really important to kind of raise the profile of that. Uh, Connie Young asked a question, which I think will be front and centre of many people's minds. How do you bring tourism back to rural areas and get a good reaction from people in the community? Because, well, we did see a reaction when some people flooded to the highlands at the beginning of, of lockdown, didn't yeah. they? And it was a bad reaction, naturally. So what can you do about that? Yeah, so I think, again, I think there is going to be a phase here where it's about reconnecting. Scotland with Scots and I think we need to shine a light on the, the important role that um, tourism plays in the Scottish economy um, the importance in terms of jobs, the importance to the whole supply chain um, and actually it, is, it can be a force for good and actually communities play a hugely important part in that authentic experience that Scotland offers. So it's about the messaging, but it's also going to be about the timing. And I think I, I, I'm, I, I'm possibly repeating myself around the timing, um, but I think it is really important is it's about getting the timing right. And I think as an industry, we play a role in that, in working across the, the networks that we all have to kind of really bring that sense of, of community pride and welcome when the time is right so that we can go out there um, with that message to the world that, that, that Scotland is, remains you know, open and welcome. But it's all about the timing and it's all about us working together collaboratively to kind of really, um, to get communities understanding the importance that tourism will play in that economic recovery. A couple of internet-based questions. You're gonna to have to explain this one to me. OTAs are dominating Google. Um, you all know what that means. Uh, and earlier somebody said, you know, can you help bloggers? I mean, bloggers can make money by blogging because of ads supporting the blogs by sharing these blogs through Visit Scotland. So can you look at these two aspects for us, Vicky? 
Yeah. So OTAs, online travel agents, you know, they are, um, you know, they have huge reach. And across, uh, you know, from a Scotland perspective, we've seen more and more businesses working with um, online travel agents. We also know from our visitor research that actually they are used more and more by visitors. So we've seen an increase in people using OTAs as a way of booking. However, it's, it's not a one size fits all. OTAs play an important role but we all play an important role in being discoverable. So as you know, whether you're a bed and breakfast, you're a visitor attraction, whether you know, I, I look at visitscotland.com, the key thing here is making sure that we are all optimizing our online experience, um, that we are understanding what people are searching for and to do with Scotland, because everybody goes to Google straight away. Um, they're searching for types of holidays, they're searching for the types of experiences they want to, to have. They may even be searching for places they want to go in Scotland. So we've all got to make sure that our channels have got the right content, um, that they are, that we're bookable, um, particularly for the businesses. Um, and that's a way of increasing, I guess, our, the reach of our own channels. Um, and we need to do that through your social media channels as well. It's, it's really about keeping in touch again with your audiences on, on social media, um, getting people who engaging with your own channels so that the reach that you're getting is beyond just your immediate fans, the people that are following your, your Facebook. So having that online presence and optimizing your online presence based on what people are searching for is really important. And I think for every um, business, it's then about working out what is the right model for you? Are you going to work with an OTA? Um, because maybe you want visitors from further afield than the UK market. Um, you know, maybe you've got times of year where um, you've got a lot of repeat visitation, but actually you've got times in the year um, where you know, you're going to be quieter. So it's using, do you want to distribute through an OTA to kind of fill those, um, those quieter moments? I don't think it can be a one size fits all. We know that OTAs play an important role, but equally so do all of our own channels, I suppose is really my message. So we've got to get the balance right there. And um, a quick word about bloggers. Uh, can you help them in any way earn money in this frustrating time? So, so we do work with um, we do work with bloggers, influencers, um, and they're a very important part of what we do um, in terms of um, building advocacy for the destination because they um, they often have you know very big followings or if they're a niche blogger have got you know a very loyal following. Um, so we do work with them. Um, we will sometimes pay and pay commission them to work with us to create new content that maybe we don't already have. Um, so it's, it's always a tactic that's part of our mix, uh, absolutely, because of, as I say, the reach and the advocacy that they have through their channels. Yeah. Okay, now large scale festivals, events, gatherings, are they likely to be back next spring, summer? Any indication? So again, I think it's an area that we are lacking information just now, um, whether we will get a wee bit more from the First Minister tomorrow around the timing of um, gatherings and what size and what form events are going to have to take. I think it is an area I know that Paul Bush is going to come on to talk about in a future webinar and he really is kind of immersed in this and he's been doing a lot of consultation around the country with event organisers and actually kind of fielding in some of the concerns and challenges that we, you know, that that industry is facing to Scottish government. So I think what we are, our focus right now is about promoting what we can virtually. So we're seeing a lot of um, nice digital content, you know, so whether it's, it's an individual, you know, um, trad music, um, person playing, you know, the music from their own home, or whether it's it's people um, looking at creating digital um, experiences, that's something that we will um, be looking to promote over this period and looking at how we can work with events and festivals to kind of create more of that content um, on the basis that I think it realistically will be next year before we are talking about gatherings of any size. Uh, I'm going to conflate several questions which are more or less saying, okay, uh, you are an influencing body with the Scottish Government. Are you doing enough to really put pressure on the government to say, look, we need a timescale here. 
uh, several of the questions are saying without a time scale, it's very difficult to do anything. So are you putting pressure on the government or is there a feeling of cooperation? How would you describe it, Vicky? Yeah, no, I mean, very good. Malcolm is meeting, um, you know, with our cabinet secretary, Fergus Ewing, on a weekly basis. Um, and Riddle will have talked about the work that Sterg are doing, the STA are doing, um, to make sure that the Scottish Government have got all of the information, um, the insight from the industry, the questions that the industry are asking. So that there's a weekly dialogue, if not daily dialogue, I would say, with Scottish Government at the moment. I think like everything else, though, um, and as we hear, you know, every day from the First Minister, they are being guided by the, the data and um, the, the science um, that, that, you know, that the health experts have. So I am hoping, like everybody else, I think, on this call, that we will get a little bit more information tomorrow as to what the opening updates are going to be so that we can um, be a bit more prepared. And that's why that phasing is really important and having as much planning as we can do um, around those phases. Um, and as I say, we are, um, you know, in the process of looking at creative, looking at the content. We can't go out and film right now, but there's ways around that. We've got a lot of footage. We've got a lot of stills and imagery. There's, there's things that we're looking at in terms of creative treatment so that we've got creative ready to go. We're talking to our media agency to, to look at what that um, autumn push might look like already. So we are being as prepared as we can be. And I think the key thing here is having lots of good dialogue and conversations, keeping the communication flow. Um, so as soon as we know, and that we've got those plans in a shape to share, we absolutely will. Because I think how we collaborate and work together through this recovery is, is gonna absolutely be key. So Vicky, I want to talk about a few things to do with messaging just now. I mean, I've been writing a script for a hotel group just now. They're putting out what I'd call a hygiene video, and this is how they're preparing their hotel hygienically for visitors coming back. Is that the kind of message you feel hotels should be pushing out just now? Or is it, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, that kind of thing, or a combination? A combination. I think, you know, an individual business level, I think it is important that you keep in touch with your, um, you know, it's your, it's your fan base through social media, through your, 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 your guests. So I'm sure many will have had people that, that return, um, you know, that have a lot of repeat visitors. So it's about keeping in touch with repeat visitors, keeping um, that um, dream now, travel later messaging, that inspiration. Um, and there's been some fantastic examples, I have to say, from, from businesses right across the country that have been doing that, that have been really innovative and sector groups that have been doing that really well. And I'm going to come back to that one, actually. But equally um, important as we start to come out of lockdown is going to be that those, those messages around safety and hygiene. You can start that now, though, clearly, because of, you know, depending on where you are in Scotland um, and the fact that you are putting your plans in place, um, you know, is a message that you can communicate. And clearly, if you are a more rural-based um, business, um, that's a, a, potentially you can be even more overt with that because people could be coming to stay in your self-catering or, or to visit your community, because actually there is going to be the, that countryside space, those open, you know, so, so there's an element of messaging, I think, that we can get out there. But the important thing is, it's going to be a mixture of both, certainly when we get to that um, post lockdown phase, it's going to be really important. So to give you an example of um, a sector group that we've been working with actually has been the um, Go Rural Irish Tourism Group. Now, despite the fact that as a sector, you know, and, and like all businesses, um, individually, they've having to, um, you know, furlough staff, um, clearly just trying to keep business, their business up and running. They've actually come together as a group and decided that it was a great opportunity to kind of really showcase what they have got to offer. Um, it's lambing season, the weather's been great. Um, and my goodness, they're just a very determined bunch. Um, and they've been out there doing um, Facebook live events every day, almost I think now for probably two or three weeks. And we've been supporting and promoting what they've been doing. And it's been fantastic because it is now, it is dream now, you know, it's, it's dream now, here's what you could come and experience. 
but clearly you can't right now, but really showcasing the countryside at its best and the warmth of the welcome, which has kind of really come across because the um, everybody, the families um, of these businesses have got involved in this activity. So it has been really great to watch. And they've had people tuning in from America, setting their alarm, um, and actually watching these Facebook live events. So, you know, an example of, I think it really, it shows to me that as well as that consumer intent that we're seeing towards Scotland and what we've got to offer, we've got that determination, um, you know, to succeed. And um, I think, you know, those qualities um, and that creativity um, really stands us in good stead. So I'm just going to go run through the seven top messages I saw in a document you had uh, that people can get out here and what, what's important to the audience just now. And we'll talk a bit more about them. Number one, mm -hmm. feeling safe. Two, champion the community. Three, be authentic. Four, be human. Five, promote optimism and regeneration. Six, pull rather than push. And seven, harness connections, perhaps connect with your tribe. I'm going to go right down to number six here. Pull rather than push. Just explain what you mean by that, would you? So I think, again, that is about right now. Clearly, we can't push with a very overt message of book now. Um, but what we can do is continue to inspire, entertain, reassure, build that brand loyalty, show the kind of nation that we are, that, you know, the fact that we are welcoming, um, that we are missing our visitors, that we're looking forward to a time when they can come back. So it's that advocacy. Um, and really, I think that is key. It stood us in good stead before. You know, when I look at activity that we launched, like um, our Scott Spirit campaign and then the Scotland Is Now campaign, you know, we don't, as a nation, we don't have huge marketing budgets to do that kind of very overt push. Um, but actually, it was the voices, it was the people of Scotland getting behind um, you know, and and sharing how much a we love Scotland and you know what Scotland has got to offer. Um, so it's more subtle. It's more subtle. It's it's about. I think it's about connecting people and locals, and communities with visitors and showing the passion that we have for our own country. A few questions, for instance, talking about the transport sector. How how can there be a clear message about say coach trips to Scotland when right now the rules say that coach has to be less than half full? Yeah so I think again going back to we have to be led by you know the data and the insight and what that's telling us at the moment is that actually there isn't consumers are not that's not where they're at they are very much thinking that they will be more that independent travel maybe small group travel um, but that small group is maybe going to be more um, friends and family. So those kind of multi-generation family experiences, because people are going to want to, you know, we've all been in lockdown. We haven't been able to spend time with our friends and family and our loved ones. So I think a big part of what people are going to look to do immediately is to reconnect and get time away from um, home um, to a different view, to a different view, a different window, different experience, be able to get out and, and explore a different area. Um, but they're going to want to do that with probably the people that are closest, that, that, they, that they want to spend that time with after this. Um, so that connection is going to be really important. And um, I think what we're not seeing is currently that demand for larger group travel. And um, it'll maybe come back. And I think, again, this goes back to the importance of these phasing but just not early on. I think what we will see is more independent travel and maybe small group travel. And we're certainly seeing, um, coming from even our contacts in terms of travel agents and tour operators internationally, that's where they're also thinking. They are, they are dealing with um, visitors who are thinking about Scotland, um, even for 20, 20, you know, last quarter of this year into 2021, but very much, it's small group travel or independent travel that they're looking to book. Okay, here's a very practical question, and it really says, well, what happens if somebody comes to a hotel, they are then diagnosed with COVID, they have to isolate for seven days, maybe it's 14 days, uh, and that provider, the hotelier, now becomes the carer, and that room is blocked. I mean, well, you can see the problems ahead, Vicky, can't you? 
we can, which I think is why really the Scottish Government are taking a very cautious approach to the easing of um, the easing of lockdown and why we will take um, a cautious approach around that, um, that phasing that I mentioned. Clearly that could be a, a scenario, it could be a very real scenario as you say, um, Bill, and I think that's where the guidance that we now get from UK hospitality, that we will get from the Scottish Government as we ease out of lockdown is going to be key here so that we can support that business if that situation does indeed occur. But again, it comes back to, you know, I think that phasing and making sure that we are, we're doing it when the time is right. And we know that the R number is down and clearly I don't think we'll see a, a border, you know, we, we've clearly still got border control in place. Um, and obviously that's an area that Westminster can con control. Um, and they have said that we are likely to have that 14 um, day quarantine period. So it's why we were we are planning and prioritizing for the UK market, which let's not forget is also our largest market, both in terms of volume and value. So it's a really, really important one anyway. Now, Vicky, I know marketeers like to jump on an opportunity. And one question, and I can see the logic in this, says, okay, so Nicola Sturgeon has taken things more cautiously than England. And I think the, caller, the commenter is saying rightly. Uh, now, is there an opportunity for Visit Scotland to say, now, Scotland has been very, very careful about this. Come to Scotland, it's a safe place. Or is that playing with fire? Whether we would be aware, we would definitely want to say that Scotland is a safe place because we know that we are following the guidance that's been given by Scottish Government. And I guess as well that businesses have had time to put all of the measures in place that will come with the, the, this, this kind of UK hospitality piece that we've talked about and whatever that, um, however we're going to operationalise that scheme, that will give us the opportunity to say that, that, that Scotland is a safe place. I think we've got to put the nuts and bolts in place in order to be able to say that. I think what we are picking up through things like social sentiment is that that caution that Scotland is showing is actually a positive for Brand Scotland. Mm. So we are seeing that in the social sentiment. So we are able to, through a tool that we use called Brand Watch, um, we are able to kind of scrape, I guess, um, what people are saying um, across the web. Um, and you know, definitely the cautious approach that we are taking is one I think that resonates, particularly with many of our European markets. We are they've been badly hit, you know, if you look at Italy and others, I think we had the opportunity to learn from them. So I think, you know, we are picking up in those markets that, um, that we are doing the right thing by being cautious. Another commentator here makes a different point, and that is that, well, England has been unlocking really now for 10 days ahead mm -hmm. of Scotland. Has that, if you like, given England the chance to steal a march on the tourism market ahead of Scotland? No, I don't believe so. And I think actually what happened last week, um, you know, is something that we would like to avoid. You know, we, we obviously have um, a number of communities who weren't maybe quite expecting the, the, that easing to be maybe as fast as it was. So I think we are definitely ahead of that. We certainly, um, we will be launching tomorrow a new page on our website um, that will also signpost to, um, the national parks, SNH and others, but basically it's about being responsible in the countryside and, and it's about promoting responsible travel to the visitor. Um, so we've put, you know, that that will be there and we will continue with the stay local messaging as we come out of this lockdown. The, the, again, the insight is telling us is that consumers are not yet in they're not yet they're, they're starting to think about holidays but actually when they're starting to to look so that kind of booking is more likely to be september october and we're seeing that quite, quite consistently through what we're seeing in google data what we're seeing through ota data and what we're seeing through our own is that it's unlikely to be the summer it's going to be the autumn and i think by that point we will be in a similar position to the rest of the uk 
And I think let's just, you know, the positives are that again, the insight is telling us that what Scotland has got to offer, you know, that, that the rural, um, the, the coastal, the great and fantastic self-catering offering that we have, the cities with the, the, the open spaces and that connection to countryside too, I think puts us in a really good place. Um, and I'm obviously in touch with um, my peers in all of our, um, in the other UK um, visits, if you like, and Visit Britain. So I don't believe from the insight I have, they are not planning to be in market any earlier than we are. I know discussing with my wife when we would go back to our favorite place, Portugal, um, she just doesn't want to get in a plane just now. And therefore that's the concern of many people around the world. Um, does Scotland have an opportunity more than other parts because we know that four fifths of our tourists come from across GB. And will you now, would you be able to predict confidently that a lot of the lost ground of the summer can be caught up in the autumn, winter and spring yeah. of next year? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a very, very good question. Clearly, the main season was when we would see, um, you know, a, a, a good number of those international visitors. But as you say, the domestic market is our bread and butter, um, and that is the market that will travel out with the main season. I think the opportunity there is actually about turning what maybe would have been short breaks in the autumn, winter period, into a longer holiday. Now, clearly there is a window when you've got families with, you know, young, with, with school aged children. And again, we don't obviously know, we, we certainly know that schools are going to go back, but whether there will be any changes to school holidays and all the rest of it. School holidays were obviously an important time to get that length of stay, particularly within the family market. But then if you look at, um, you know, other demographics, um, you know, whether that's the a slightly older, the couples market, etc can we get that longer stay? People are going to want holiday after this and certainly the intent is more towards the autumn winter. So can we turn more of those short breaks into a longer stay? I think is the opportunity to get more money into the visitor economy um, and to get more visitors um, to Scotland. So, so let, let me build on a question which, which I think is a very interesting point. Are, are you Visit Scotland speaking to the likes of National Trust for Scotland and HES about staying open longer this year than normal? And, and therefore, by definition, should visitor attractions be looking to stay open into November rather than closing down in September or October? No, again, that is, that's a very good question. And I think we have, we're obviously having regular dialogue with the likes of our national partners like Historic Scotland National Trust. And again, um, I was talking to Gordon Morrison from ASBA just yesterday. What we do know is that actually some of our attractions may not open um, for the you know, there, there may be a situation where um, for reasons of capacity, for reasons of cost to make it viable, that they don't open immediately. Um, and so we are, again, it goes back to that, we will need to balance um, the supply side with the demand side. I think if there is an opportunity and businesses are willing to do it, um, to be open slightly longer and we almost make that autumn winter period the main season if you like we turn our focus to see how can we make this um, the main season um, then we should grab it but I think we just bear in mind that you know I'm very very conscious right now that with all that businesses are dealing with that there is a fragility there and that we might not see all of our attractions um, open and at full capacity. So again, we've got to get the balance right, but equally grab the opportunity. Um, and remember the great outdoors, because actually the autumn period in Scotland is fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, here's a very practical question from Susan. She says she has bookings in place for the summer. There's pent up demand, but she needs clear messaging about whether summer holidays are definitely canceled. I can un understand that. I mean, many of yeah. us have had flights or whatever, and yeah. you get to a legal position where you're going to lose money unless a government steps in and says you can't fly. So what can you do there, Vicky? Yeah. So again, I think once we know what the travel restrictions are, what that, that easing of lockdown is going to look like and what the dates are, if we have got businesses who, and if, if that, that summer period, as you say, maybe is just 
travel within Scotland. That, that, that could be a scenario. Um, and we've got businesses with capacity, then we will obviously turn our attention to supporting, you know, supporting that and looking at how we can ensure we can connect visitors with those businesses that are looking for that business. But as you say, it absolutely comes down to what the First Minister will say tomorrow, what that easing plan is going to look like. And, um, you know, we all all need to take our, our kind of to reflect on our planning and our plans, if you like, once we know that. Yes, uh, Colin points out that you need to know from an insurance point of view. Frank points out that France is allowing trips up to 100 kilometres, which is what, yes. 55 miles or something just now. So yes. we could see something, and we're all guessing now, aren't we? But we could see something yes. in terms of, yes. of a physical distance put in the limitation of how far we can travel, yes. which I suppose would allow people to reconnect with their own community. And that's it. That's that, that phase of reconnecting Scotland with Scots. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you've been through the mill in terms of the questions there. I've lost count of how many I put you, Vicky, but I do appreciate your time today and your openness with everything you're saying. I know it's an impossible job to square the circle right now, but it's clear that Visit Scotland are clearly working with different agencies, with the government to do what they can here. I suppose we're all waiting on tenter hooks for these Thursday announcements from the government, aren't we? Yeah, we are. But any final message, if you like, to wrap up what you've been saying today, either in terms of what you're doing or what you'd ask all your stakeholders to do just now? I think the key thing right now is communication. Um, we're all in this together. We've got to keep that regular dialogue um, going. Um, and everybody has my commitment that we will do that, that we will share our plans um, you know, as, we, as, we, as soon as we've, we've got them developed and we understand more. I think we're an industry that is definitely determined, um, you know, that is, is creative. There is that passion and um, the passion within the industry and a passion for, for that fan base that we have around the globe. So if we can harness all of those things, um, and I think, you know, we, we will, it will take time. But I think together we will, in a staged way, we will see a return um, of the visitor economy and the important role it plays, um, I think, in, in Scotland and supporting jobs and that supply chain. And the key things for me that have been, you know, we've been successful up until this point because we have ensured a number of things that, you know, we are discoverable that we optimize our online presence and we are discoverable in the channels and the places that consumers are looking and booking, that we um, are great storytellers. So let's continue with that. Let's continue all getting behind, you know, really promoting Scotland and that, that advocacy strategy and approach. Let's be led by the data and the insight. You know, the audiences that we had, the markets that we had, they may change slightly, and that's okay, we can flex. So let's be led by that data and insight, that advocacy, that passion, that storytelling, and making sure that we are discoverable as a nation. And I think, you know, we will, we will um, gradually see the return of um, that, that visitor economy. It may take us a little while to get back to where we were, um, but I think by working together, we will. So play the law. Yes, there is hope, isn't it? Play the long game. Keep people interested. Keep in touch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay, Vicky. Well, we're all looking for positive messages and progress. Thank you very much for your time. And we look forward to the next call in just a few days' time. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And thank you to everybody for listening. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.